If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. At the day change, 21 players from the blue team went AI and 27 of the red team. This is huge, almost half of the map just went inactive like that. Honestly, I find this so irritating. If you can't commit to a thing, don't start. And if you start a thing, finish it. This leaves the blue team with 29 players and the red team only with 18 players, meaning we have 11 players more than the red team, they are heavily outnumbered. As you can see here now, we have taken almost all of Africa. I'm moving in here to finish the job that North Sudan was never able to do. All is going well. I've got my army already moving here into Syria. And these armies here, I'm gonna send them to Saudi Arabia. It's pretty straightforward at this point. Also, Europe has been conquered. It leaves only Sweden and Finland that is still active. But I guess those will get conquered soon too. We are losing a lot of ground in the Americas, both in North and South. But I hope that soon the Western African countries, they're gonna go to South America and European countries to North America and then it should be over fast. Here Maclick is one of the only players that is still committing to fight but he is fighting against multiple AI and alive players at the same time so he is being hard pressed, he asked for help so far only British Odessa has replied that he can send units but he has a long way to go and I see little to no troop movement to help him actually I see no troop movement at all they're barely active in Asia it's sad really. Come on man, play for Christ's sake. An honorable mention for day 4 is that I have the mightiest army with 4% followed by New Zealand with 3% and third is Nigeria with 2%. I'm also the most popular nation on the map because I gave shared maps to all AI. But I mean what the heck, with 4% here I have the biggest army followed by 3% and 2%. These stats speak louder than words about the inactivity on this map. It is unbelievable. I mean 75% of my teammates, I'm sorry, they are noobs. Usually I kill them, but in this game I'm forced to play with them. I've tried to explain like a zillion times now that you don't waste your time attacking AI like my ally wants to do here. Why waste time on an AI from which you have nothing to gain when you are in war with all these nations? Then there was a smart ass Yugoslavia who replied, yes, it's to take cities and resources. Well, you can take cities and resources and the enemy countries too, dude. For some reason, plenty players in Call of War, they are afraid to attack other player countries. I mean, it's a war game for Christ's sake, attack the enemy. If you don't want to attack player countries, go play some city. <laughs> <laughs> we are at day 5 now and I'm really starting to get frustrated about these guys. They have no strategical sense whatsoever. I need to give them their orders time and time again in the chat. See, this is all me. I'm all explaining them what to do. I'm giving orders to French Sudan, to Yugoslavia. Actually, only Nigeria here, North Sudan and Libya, they know what they are doing. Also, British Odessa, he's wasting his time on AI. His whole army here is on this border while his allies here are being attacked by all of these nations. He's just chilling out here attacking a little bit of AI. I have no idea how players can be so clueless in this game, you know? And how can they survive in a regular game? Normally I just kill these kinds of players, but on this map I am forced to play with them and it's so goddamn frustrating, man. I mean, as you know, I don't mind teaching people, I don't mind explaining them, 
but please make an effort and listen. You have these players here, they make the same mistakes over and over again. They do what they think is right instead of listening for once to a more experienced player and follow his lead. But no, that's too difficult, right? I'm gonna do whatever I want. I'm gonna follow whatever ID drops in my head, how stupid it may be. God damn. I guess you can hear my frustration here, right? So what to do, huh? What to do? They're just uh, tagging along and I just need to try to keep those stragglers motivated to keep them moving to follow the head of the column, I, I guess. Then you also got here Nob Yugoslavia who is drawing lines all over the map. He's gonna bring one single ship all the way here and his attack is already set. I mean, how stupid is that? What if you pass a target along the way? What if you get attacked along the way? He's not even gonna respond fire, he's just gonna keep going. My god. And then he doesn't even stack his battleships. Got a single battleship, it's not stacked together with destroyers. If he bumps here in one submarine, his expensive ship will be sunk. And even though he has a navy, he's sending his units here unescorted over sea. I mean, dear god. It hurts my eyes to see this. On the upside, we have 26 active players and the enemy team only has 13, so we outnumber them 2 to 1. You can see the map is nicely colored blue. Not only that, but we have about 1200 points more than the enemy team and we only need 600 points to win the coalition victory. So in short, that's like 60 cities. I mean, that's nothing for 26 players. Everybody takes three cities, game over. How cool is that, you know? Okay, we are six hours away from day change. The map is turning more and more green. And as you can see here in the Middle East, we are cutting like a knife through butter. It is going smoothly, extremely fast. One small disadvantage though, Everything here was empty, but the AI moved and produced units. They marched, they marched to embark on my coast. What's happened now? My convoys are locked in a battle. This is not good, but um, yeah, they should make it. At least this big stack here. I'm gonna lose a couple of units. That's the way it is. It's fine, I haven't lost a single unit yet this game, so that's always good. Talking about losing units, I want to show you here in a Maklik what is happening. Um, I'm gonna zoom out. He doesn't have infantry in his cities. Neither him, but also Tibet. Or here, this is uh, Sichuan, no, Xinjiang has no units in his core provinces whatsoever. It's basic 101 always to keep an infantry in your cities just in case to slow down the enemy otherwise you can get conquered by a simple armored car. Um, now he is fighting Korea who is using only light tanks, artillery and infantry. So no scout units, right? So in a case you'll be losing badly like this, you almost have no more army left. What can you do? You can switch your production to militia and anti-tank. The combination militia and anti-tank is extremely powerful as they are stealth units. If your enemy doesn't use scout units, you can ambush them very easily. Militia and anti-tank will just shred light armored and infantry units without any problem. On top of it, he has a lot of forests here. Anti-tank and militia get extra bonuses in forests, also in cities, but militia also gets bonuses in mountains. So there is plenty of possibilities here to ambush your enemy. On top of it, militia and anti-tank, they train very fast. So you can make a large army very fast to defend yourself, to live and to fight another day. You can also see a perfect example how not to use artillery, okay? 
he is attacking the province center here because there's troops there. But as soon as these troops are gonna start moving to attack the artillery, what is going to happen? Well, your artillery will continue to pound the province center instead of the troops and you're gonna get locked in combat with your artillery without giving any damage. Not only that, but you should always protect your artillery. This is quite important. You can see here that Korea, he protects his artillery. Also Khabarovsk arrives on the scene with the medium tank. Those deal more damage to militia and anti-tank as they have higher health, but still in numbers you can easily defeat those as well. Although they are heavy armored class, it's more difficult. 